The Office follows the everyday lives of employees at Dunder Mifflin's Granton as they attempt to work under the always unpredictable Michael Scott. It is definitely my favorite show of all time as I've watched the entire series over three times. So sit back, relax, and enjoy hearing more about your favorite paper company. 1. Steve Carell almost wasn't Michael Scott. Then Universal Pictures chairman Stacy Snyder first suggested Carell to the producers. However, Carell had already taken a job on the NBC sitcom Come to Papa. Greg Daniels also looked at Bob Odenkirk, David Kochner, Alan Tudyk, and even Wilson, who was obviously more suited for Dwight. But Come to Papa quickly flopped, and NBC let Carell test for Michael Scott. He nailed it, said Silverman. The rest is history. 2. Remember the episode Gay Witch Hunt, where Michael holds a meeting talking about homosexuality? Well, the writers only intended for Michael to hug Oscar, but Steve Carell obviously had other plans in mind and actually kissed him. That's right, the shock on Oscar's face was 100% real. 3. Greg Daniels has said that Jenna Fisher was the perfect Pam. The only alternative he had to Jenna was one in which Pam was African American, and so was Roy. It would have been Craig Robinson as Roy, and Erica Vitina Phillips as Pam. 4. Steve Carell decided to place a Union Jack flag on top of his desk in honor of the British version of the show. Steve Carell said the gesture was his own way of paying homage to the original series on which the NBC series was based, which he very rarely watched. 5. Even after The Office stopped airing, Jenna Fisher kept the engagement ring that Jim gave her in the series and is still sometimes seen wearing it in TV appearances. According to The Grapevine, the ring cost $5,000 when it was first bought. 6. Three characters in The Office had their first success in The Daily Show. Ed Helms and Steve Carell had their first breakthrough when they became correspondents in the program, while Larry Wilmore once served as one of the writers. 7. Mindy Kaling was hired on The Office after Greg Daniels saw her perform a two-woman show called Matt and Ben, about Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, with her roommate Brenda Withers at the New York International Fringe Festival. 8. Mindy's roommate Brenda made an appearance in Season 2 of the show, playing Brenda Matlow. 9. The casting directors initially wanted to bring John Krasinski in to read for Dwight, but Krasinski continually insisted that he felt Jim Halpert was the better fit for him. He turned down the option to read for Dwight and said, If they don't find a Jim, I'll come in and read for that. 10. Creed Bratton initially was just cast as an extra in the background. They had already cast all the parts, but they allowed him to get involved in the show because they found him so odd. Eventually, they gave him a few lines at a time, and it was all history from there. 11. Creed Bratton's actual name in real life is Creed Bratton. 12. Creed Bratton was a member of the 1960s band, The Grassroots. 13. Remember that episode in Season 9 where Pam is being interviewed by Mark, the guy who acts exactly like Michael? That scene was a throwback to the little-known fact that Bob Odenkirk nearly got the role of Michael Scott. 14. Phyllis Smith was once an NFL cheerleader and a burlesque performer. Yup, she was actually the casting director of the show when she got offered the part of Phyllis, which was created just for her. 15. Amy Poehler was originally going to play the role of Jan Levinson Gould instead of Melora Hardin. Even though she didn't get the part, the producers kept Poehler in mind and cast her as Leslie Nope in Parks and Recreation. 16. Steve Carell is married to Saturday Night Live alumnus Nancy Walls, who he met when she attended an improv class he was teaching. Nancy has appeared in the office as Michael's realtor and love interest, Carol Stills. 17. In the episode Basketball, Daryl mentions that the winner of the game gets a dinner at Farley's. Farley's was an actual restaurant in Scranton and had a Michael Scott burger on their menu. 18. Leslie David Baker came out with a music video in 2011 that showed us all a different side of Stanley. 19. According to Dunderpedia, a fan site for The Office, the computers on set were connected to the internet. If you saw an actor in the background doing work, they were probably just messing around online. 20. As soon as he found out he was cast as Jim, John Krasinski headed to Scranton with some friends and a video camera to put together those opening shots that now play at the beginning of every episode. 21. Parks and Recreation was almost an office spin-off. Originally, Lieberstein imagined that one of Dunder Mifflin's copy machines would break, get refurbished, and end up in Pawnee, Indiana, thus tying both NBC mockumentaries together. Unfortunately, that never came to be, and if it had, that would've been pretty cool. 22. Oscar wasn't supposed to be gay. 
It all happened because Wardrobe put him in a pink shirt at one point, and that shirt led to Oscar's big reveal in the season 3 episode, Gay Witch Hunt. 23. Dwight being a beet farmer was inspired by the fact that Greg Daniel's grandparents were beet farmers in Poland, and Moses' character was inspired by the reality show Amish in the City. 24. So you might know that BJ Novak and John Krasinski went to the same high school, but did you know that the same is true for Ed Helms and Brian Baumgartner? They were one year apart at the Westminster schools in Georgia, classes of 91 and 92. 25. Poor Richards is a real bar in Scranton that you can actually visit. It's inside a Scranton bowling alley and is called the South Side Lanes Bar by locals. 26. The certificate in Michael Scott's office reads, Certificate of Authenticity. Michael Scott is the proud owner of a quality Seiko timepiece, with the word Seiko being misspelled. 27. There were several spin-off ideas, including a parody of PBS's An American Family, which would have starred Ed Helms and Catherine Tate. Also, a Jim and Pam spin-off was considered around season 4, as was the Shroot Farm spin-off that was never picked up by NBC. 28. A lot of people turned on Pam when she became more assertive, Fisher says. That always made me sad. I'm so proud of her that she found her voice. But there are some people, particularly men, who are far more attracted to her as a wallflower. I think that's so telling in what they're looking for in a woman. 29. The idea to create a US version of The Office started after TV producer Ben Silverman happened to catch an episode of the UK version while vacationing in London. Silverman immediately contacted the series creator, Ricky Gervais, to acquire the rights to the show. 30. Seth Rogen auditioned for the role of Dwight. 31. Angela Kinsey originally auditioned for the role of Pam. After not getting the role, Kinsey thought she had missed her shot to be on the show. Instead, writers created the role of Angela just for her. 32. The paper that is highlighted during the opening credits is actually a Los Angeles Department of City Planning document. 33. BJ Novak's character was named after former Scranton baseball player Ryan Howard, who later made a guest appearance on the show. 34. The success of The 40-Year-Old Virgin, which shot Steve Carell to stardom, saved The Office from cancellation after its first season. 35. Jenna Fisher's real-life pregnancy was not an issue with writers, as they were already planning for Pam to get pregnant. 36. In the episode The Launch Party, John Krasinski accidentally signs Meredith's cast with his real-life name. 37. In the episode of Benny Hanna Christmas, Michael, Andy, and Jim dine at the same exact Benny Hanna restaurant that Andy goes to in the 40 year old virgin. 38. Although Dunder Mifflin is a fictitious company, it is recognized by the Scranton Chamber of Commerce because of all the tourism it has given the city. 39. On The Office, Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey are bitter rivals, but in real life, the pair are actually best friends. 40. Some of the writers are actors. Mindy Kaling, Paul Lieberstein, and BJ Novak are writers on The Office. Steve Carell, Jenna Fisher, Rain Wilson, and John Krasinski have written and directed episodes on occasion. 41. Even if they weren't writers, Greg Daniels wanted to make sure his actors had a background in improvising. He has said, Improv is a good tool to make it seem more natural. 42. When Angela tells Kevin that she is afraid she'll be fired, Kevin speaks in a much different voice than we're used to. This is actually the normal voice of actor Brian Baumgartner. 43. Michael asks Ryan if he's ever seen Punked, a play on the beginning of BJ Novak's career as he was a cast member on the show. 44. Stanley is shown to have depression, mood swings, muscle cramps, and fatigue. This is seen in a brief moment when there is a close-up of his healthcare form. 45. The show had to stop production in November 2007 because of a writer's strike. Steve Carell supported the writers and refused to cross the picket lines even for non-writing duties. Carell went so far as to call in sick to the network on the first day of the strike, citing a case of enlarged balls as the reason he couldn't come in. 46. Paul Lieberstein's role as Toby Flenderson was meant to be a one-time appearance, since Lieberstein had never acted before and never actually wanted to because of his quiet, reserved personality. However, NBC president Kevin Riley saw the episode where Toby appeared and reportedly said, That red-haired guy is terrific, we should see more of him, thus cementing Toby's role as a recurring character. Notably, Toby has no or few lines or story presence in any episode that Paul Lieberstein writes or directs. 47. The Welcome to Scranton sign featured in the opening credits, formerly located on the Central City Expressway, is now on display in the food court of the mall at Steamtown. 48. 
Michael Scott speaks the first line of the series, and Pam delivers the final line. 49. A couple times throughout the series, Angela mentions that her favorite song is Little Drummer Boy. In the pilot episode of the series, at the very beginning of the episode, Dwight is singing that very song at his desk. 50. Michael Scott has Donald Trump's book, Think Like a Billionaire, in his office. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe as that helps me out a lot. And uh, let me know in the comments what kind of video you guys want me to do next. Um, I was thinking of moving away from the facts for a little bit, so let me know what you think about that. Alright, thanks. Bye.